Hello my freaky people. Today I'm doing a decor haul, a Halloween specifically decor haul. Now Australia doesn't have too much to offer. So I'm a little fucking pissed about that. Having said that, I did find some really cool stuff from a store called TK Maxx. Hey everyone, I'm Evelina Demore. Welcome back to my channel. Who is excited for Halloween? I am. Like, I was so excited last year to be in America at the time of Halloween. I picked up a lot of things that aren't necessarily just for Halloween. If you like myself, that stuff gets displayed all year round, not just on October 31st. So I am here today to show you what I got, where I got it from, and probably talk about why I bought it. I wanted to change up my lighting a little bit in this video because... Because why not? Um, I've got spooky lights and I don't use them. So let me know if you're liking the vibe of this video. I think all of my videos should have this creative lighting. It's way more fun and not so serious. Okay, now I am a massive fan of Jade the Libra. I'm sure you've heard of her if you're into gothy kind of YouTubers. She's just a full-on witch. And of course, I'm watching her Halloween decor hauls. And my heart literally stopped when I saw one of these items. It also stopped when I saw the price. But it is so fucking cool. I needed it in my life. Let's put it frontwards. Kind of like what's... You're gonna have one of those moments where you're like, did you, did you, did you buy that? I'm like, yes, I did. I think I'll take some, that's like, it's obviously a crystal ball. But it has that cool shit that always fascinated me where the electricity goes to your fingers. I always loved this as a child. As soon as I saw it in Jade the Libra's haul, she didn't buy it. She was like, it's too dear. I'm like, yeah, I fucking agree with you, girl. It's too dear. <laughs> I'm like, I still want it. It's very awesome. And it plays the music that you're listening to. As I'm doing this video. Creepy thunder and lightning. Very, very frightening. My kids are absolutely obsessed with this. And how awesome does it look under the green lighting? I love how they have combined like the tarot reader and the witch. Because they're, they're witch fingers, man. But then you've got all the jewelry of the traditional tarot reader. And thank gosh you can turn off the sound but still have the electricity kind of work. Is that showing up? I don't think that's showing up. I will film it at night so you can see how cool it is. It's so quiet without the storm. Come back. Okay, so don't kill me. But this... And don't tell Fun. <laughs> this was 100, 199 US dollars. I fucking love it. And that's all there is to it, okay? I had to have it. And yeah, then there was the postage to Australia. That's a whole other drama. So I introduced this video saying that everything was, woo, was from TK Maxx. But that actually wasn't. So that was from a store, I'm looking at the box, called Grandin Road. G-A-R-A-N. I'll, I'll put it in the description below. They had some cool stuff, but most of it was too big for me to even consider shipping to Australia. Which sucks, because I found this massive, like massive, maybe 40 inch coffin sign that I want. But it's too hard to get it shipped. Why is Australia so far away? So the next thing that I found was this awesome doorbell. Look at this! <laughs> Is it different every time? That sounded like Peter Steele. I'm in love. And fluoro, like it had me at the fluoro green eyeball. Seriously, let's just turn that down a little bit. Ah! So I absolutely adore my eyeball doorbell, but it was advertised as a doorbell. So I'm a little disappointed because there's not actually like the receiver. Like, okay, I put this outside. It's got the hooks to mount it up. It's just a fucking toy. I'm like, okay, where's the part when the person presses the button and then I'm alerted that there's someone at my door? <laughs> it's not there, it doesn't exist. So luckily I have a handy as fuck husband who can do pretty much anything and he said he might be able to wire up our current doorbell to this. This is so awesome, I want this outside. Not just for Halloween, I want this to be my normal doorbell. So I'm really hoping that he can do that for me. That would be cool. Let's talk about my t-shirt for a second. Trickle fucking treat! I am so ready for Halloween. I wish Australia would hurry up and get as into it as America. That would be awesome. Last year, I had literally one person knock on my door. I'm like, dude, it's fucking October 31st. Where are you motherfuckers with your pumpkins? I've got my candy, I'm ready. Okay, so you may or may not know that recently, Yvonne and I and the kids traveled up to Sydney for my grandfather's funeral, which was lovely. And while we were there, I popped into TK Maxx. I keep going to call it TJ Maxx, because in America, it's TJ Maxx. And I bought a lot of things there when I was in America last year, right around Halloween. But yeah, for some reason in Australia and apparently the UK, it's TK Maxx. So the first thing we bought London, because he loves pumpkins, which is adorable, is this snow globe. Isn't it just the most prettiest thing you've seen? And the first thing he said to me, which was adorable, he said, mommy, why is the mummy pumpkin eating the baby pumpkin? And I'm like, oh, and my heart just melted. I was like, ah. 
it's because the mummy pumpkin just loves the baby pumpkin so much they have to eat you up and the beautiful thing about this one is that it does this beautiful tune let's turn that off it's so harry potter-ish i mean it's like four notes away from harry potter you know like avoiding copyright law but remarkably similar and we've got incantation spells brews and potions so this top, which I'm in love with the print, the quality is insane, is by Cavity Colors. I bought about five of their shirts and I plan on doing a little video on them because they've got some really cool Halloween prints. I bought one of Elvira and again, the print is phenomenal. And I just wanted to give a little shout out to my friend at Hex Asylum who custom made me this little necklace. Isn't it adorable? He sent me some other really interesting stuff too, which I can't wait to check out and show you guys on Instagram. Okay, look, I think I have a little obsession with snow globes. Having said that, I only bought one for myself, so the others, uh, one was for London, as you saw, and the other one was for Steel. This was love at first sight. As soon as I saw this, I'm gonna shake it so you can see it straight away. And it's all this lovely, like, absolutely gorgeous quality. Like, it looks like alchemy gothic. So you've got a raven sitting on a skull with the black glitter inside, a skull on the very top, and then you've got all the, the bones that the globe is actually sitting on. It's one of the classiest globes I've ever seen. It was $24.95 and again, everything that I'm going to show you from this point on is from TK Maxx. As soon as I saw this, I was like, Vaughn, I need that in my life. <laughs> I hope they have this stuff online if you're in Australia and you can grab something yourself. Another little shout out to my friend Ash who runs Halloween 13, an Australian jewelry company. She actually did a post on Instagram. I didn't even know that like TK Maxx was a thing in Australia and she was buying all this stuff. And for a minute I thought she was in America. I'm like, eh, no, Ash is... She's she's like in Brisbane. This is this is happening in my country. Where are you shopping? So I was super excited and when I knew I was going to Sydney, the wheels kind of got turning. And here we are. <laughs> I was disappointed that they didn't have any cool tumblers. I'm still using the ones that I purchased last year and my favorite black one by Killstar. I dropped and it fucking broke. Okay, it would not be Halloween without a pumpkin, but isn't this the most evilest pumpkin you've ever seen? So Vaughn's calling it carnival glass, and it probably is if that's what he's saying, because he's a clever fucking cookie. But it's that oil slick stuff that us dumb folk are calling it oil slick glass instead of carnival glass. You're seeing it everywhere at the moment. I have it in my office. I've got a unicorn pen holder with the same thing. Killstar releasing cups with it. It is absolutely gorgeous finish. And what I loved about this is that it's squashed. It's a little fucking cute squash pumpkin. It's like it didn't get enough water and gravity had its way with it. And <laughs> it wants to be bigger, but it can't. So that was $14.95 and they did have bigger ones that looked more normal. I just really appreciated the shortness of the pumpkin. Okay, next up was an entire dinner set. You know me. Fun was just like, buy, just buy one or two plates. I'm like, but then how am I going to have a dinner party? He's like, when do you ever have dinner parties? And I'm like, one day I will when I have enough friends to do that. And when I do, I'll be prepared and have, have the appropriate crockery for this occasion. He's just like, you're fucked. When you love someone enough that you can literally just like three or four times a day say you're fucked and then they not get offended, that's a really good relationship. Okay, so this is the plate set that I got. Isn't that gorgeous? So it has Wicked on it. It came in a box, but Wicked, I think that's supposed to be a C, Wicked Circa. Anyway, what really caught my eye about it is the back. I love shiny things, you know that. If you've been on my channel for a while, I love shiny things. I try to make all of my bags out of patent because it's shiny. And this was $6.95. Like, I don't know, it's, that looks really high end to me. It's really beautiful. So I got four of the, I don't know what you'd call them, salad bowl dishes. It's not really deep enough to be a soup bowl. And then we have the little bread and butter plate to go with it. And of course, the dinner plates. I thought these were just absolutely fabulous. They had many more, but I was forced to make the decision which was how many dinner sets do I actually need? I'm like, well, if it's how many dinner sets I need with spider webs and bats and skulls on it, that's a really hard decision to make. So I also got one more, which is also by the same brand, Wicked, which is this silhouette plane. Isn't that gorgeous? It looks like I could have designed it. I love when that happens. It's got these gorgeous bats and spider webs and spooky houses and all things goth that you need for Halloween. But this is an every day of the week dinner plate. And it was like $6.95. It's, it feels like really nice crockery. And I'm super happy that I got four. Oh, look, there's even a little black cat. So we've got ravens and spiders and bats and black cats and cemeteries. <laughs> it's just perfect. The second last one, and Vaughn picked this for <laughs> steel, is this snow globe that has eyeballs in it. We wanted a purple one, 
They had this lovely one with purple liquid, but one of the legs was broken so it wouldn't sit correctly. And it's funny because I saw this exact snow globe featured in Aurelio Voltaire's recent Halloween decor haul from T TK or TJ, wherever he's based. The same shop and it caught his eye, pardon the pun. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I've seen that before. It's terrific. Us two definitely have similar tastes. Okay, the last things which are pretty fucking boring, but I'm gonna show you anyway, because you might be looking for them, are just tea towels. They have skulls on it and they're orange. They're perfect. Again, I use these all year round. What I love about the tea towels that they bring in from overseas is that they're literally more like a towel. I don't like the kind that Australia has, where it's like this material that is non-water absorbent. You know what I'm talking about, Australia. It's fucking annoying. It's like using paper to wipe up mess. It doesn't work. I love that these towels are so soft. So I got a set of three. I've already been using them so they're not folded. A black one and then a boring gray one. But they weren't as nice as the ones that I got last year from America. But I've just been having a look at another American store called Joann's, literally J-O-A-N-N. -N. And they have an amazing variety of tea towels. And I just put a message out on Instagram asking anyone in America, anyone at all. I said, can I ship it to someone and then they ship it to me so I can have some nice tea towels. And I had like, <laughs> honestly, a hundred people say I will help you out which is so lovely so thank you so much thank you in particular to the lovely lady that's going to help me out who's already a customer at my store so that that makes it even more special so thank you so much so I feel there will be another Halloween haul coming up pretty fucking soon you might be noticing something a little different with my hair you guys think oh, I forgot to put the noise back on I'm so upset there we go now it's spooky yeah, I'm kind of loving it. Like I don't have the balls to ombre my hair because when I bleach it, it just dreads and I can hardly handle brushing it as it is. It's getting really long. It's like past my nipples now, almost down to my belly button. So bleaching it, it's just, I, it's not the right thing to do, but I just put this clip in and I, I love it when it kind of gets all messy. It kind of seems to straighten out. I think I need to put some hairspray in it and back tease it a little bit. But yeah, I love how it's instantly just this different look. We're like, hello, who are you, blonde girl? Kind of loving it. Let me know in the comments what you think below. Okay, we need to have a chat. This is not Halloween related at all, just slightly life related. I went through a major, major bout of depression very recently. Probably brought on by my second miscarriage. Let's be real, that shit is fucking dark. It is a very dark thing to go through once, let alone twice with multiple oh I don't want to talk about that now I didn't connect the two until a few months later but of course it's like a very tragic situation to go through and I obviously wasn't dealing as well as I thought I was so I started opening up and talking to some people and even making the videos with you guys telling you about that helped the grieving process anyway in my depression I went off everything I should be working on collabs with other people I have been working on the Danny to find bag um, we're just going back and forth with designs and I was very sad to hear that she was going through a lot of depression as well so it was like six weeks where we just didn't do anything because um, she was down or I was down so that is still coming. I don't know what I did I think I just Netflixed. I, <laughs> I watched a lot of TV and that's okay I'm not I'm not upset with myself for doing that because sometimes you just need to chill in bed and watch TV you know like I work myself pretty fucking hard um, but things were just getting me really down I wasn't myself and I can't remember what made me start getting back into music like I pr probably could like a month ago like if you know me as a youtuber or a designer or a mother like before that 10 years 20 years ago it was all music and and I kind of lost that for a while like in 2013 I released my album my first album with as angels bleed check it out if you haven't already we were doing gigs um, and then it all kind of the live element fell apart you've heard me say that before and then very suddenly we moved to Tamworth six hours away from Sydney so that kind of stopped the whole band thing like not driving six hours to a rehearsal and also obviously having children. I know a lot of you are just like, yeah, that's just fucking life. But there was a lot of changes very quickly. And it's like I went from being a singer, a songwriter, recording every day, doing this to being a mother and having to adjust to that. Like we hadn't set up the studio for I think a year and a half, maybe two years while we were in this new house. I threw myself into decorating the bedroom. The bedroom tour is coming. I will get to my point. I just stepped away from music completely. Um, singing had become such a chore. It's like I was on this impossible mission to change my voice to something it wasn't. And I've mentioned this in a few newsletters now, posts and blogs and things like that, but <laughs> a good friend said to me the other day when I was talking about kind of refining my voice and my love for music, pointing out it's my passion, that sounds so gay, it's like what every single entrance says on The Voice in American Idol. Music's just my passion. So what has made you find your voice or whatever, because that's kind of how I was phrasing it. And I'm like, I think it's yelling at the kids for the last five years, because still, still is five years old. That sounds terrible. 
horrible. But anyone with children knows what the fuck I mean. I mean, you're like, still, stop that. Ah! You're just constantly, don't do that. <laughs> I think it engaged the diaphragm in a different way and the larynx did something and my vocal, I don't know, something's happened and I've just got a freedom that I've never had before. I also don't have as much time. Like I did that pretty reckless cover. And I said to you guys in that, I don't have time to learn the songs. I'm gonna read the lyrics. I'm gonna give it a no fucks attitude. And I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed it a bit too much. And that, that's not a bad thing, but that kind of started the whole process. I think what also was a bit of a kick in the ass is that I, I just happened to read, cause someone reposted or something, my new year's resolution for 2019, which was I return to music. And I'm like, dude, it's fucking August and you've done nothing. I'm like, that's not much of a return. Everything just takes so long and things are hard. Like I, I do a million things, so it's hard. I run a business, I've got a house to maintain. I cook every night. There's a lot of things that I do, but if it's such a priority, I need to make time for it. Anyway, so I literally filmed that, the pretty reckless cover, which you guys enjoyed, which is awesome on my phone. One take. And then I started practicing guitar again. I cut off my nails, which obviously are back. <laughs> so that didn't last too long. I'm, I'm very impulsive. If you don't know me, I'm very impulsive. I will get 200, like 210 behind something for a fucking week. And then I'll disregard it completely and never do it again. Like for example, my whole like thing with taxidermy and like preserving insects. And I bought like $500 worth of stuff. I've got tarantulas, I've got bats, I've got all types of typo negative fluoro green bugs that I've got to do things with and crafting bits that I bought. I went nuts. And then I've got them all here and I'm like, oh, okay. I did like three, but then it, it waned off and I thought music was gonna be like this too. So I did the Taylor Momsen song. Really enjoyed it, started playing guitar again, was going to go out and buy, I'll put a picture up of this lovely Hagstrom guitar. I think it's called the Viking Deluxe. I can't remember which one I decided on. Anyway, it was just fucking beautiful. I cut off my nails because you can't play guitar. Most of you don't even know that I played guitar. Like it's, it's my second instrument. Piano is my first. And I was really enjoying it. And then I started to work on more covers. And at the time we were recording No Doubts, Don't Speak. And I said to Vaughn, I just, I just wanted to be quick. I was really inspired by Violet Orlandi, I think her name is. I was watching a lot of her covers. I'm like, wow, you know, I can do this. Um, you know, let's push my channel more into music as in covers because original music takes so fucking long to produce and write, blah, 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 blah. I'd like to be actively working on music and the only way to foreseeably do that in the future is with covers and i have no problem with that that's, that's terrific they're already done it's easy i just want to like rework them I, and put my own kind of stamp on them you know so we started doing no doubt with the idea that i would just sing to the karaoke's that are already available on the internet anyway it went so beautifully i this is the first time i properly recorded in like maybe three three and a half years but i don't know something changed in my voice and it it was beautiful like normally recording vocals is so stressful i'm so hard on myself and th this was easy i was doing long takes so the song was almost done in one take it was raw it was alive my voice was sounding better than it ever had before obviously the five years of yelling at the children is some kind of uh, <laughs> vocal exercise that no one knows about we ended up redoing the guitars <laughs> drums basically we basically redid the whole song so i'm not using that karaoke anymore and then i thought you know what i'm a proper musician i probably shouldn't be just using the karaoke's and it also puts me in the same playing field as everyone else that does that which i don't really want to do why be like everybody else if i can separate myself and do something a little different you know anyone can go to youtube and download a karaoke and then sing their cover i wanted to do something a little more magical um and the only way to do that is yeah to redo the music so we ended up doing that can't wait for you to hear that. I'm going to pay the money and get each track mastered as well and really get into this and do it properly. That's like a hundred plus dollars per track. And I'm thinking of starting a Patreon. Can you guys comment down below on if this idea excites you? I will have a whole video on that in the future, but I thought I could do live concerts or something like that. Is as Angels Bleed still even a thing? I don't know. The Sisters of Mercy cover. I don't even know if we're going to release that as, as Angels Bleed or just like under my name. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't I don't know. It's been such a long time. I don't know what's right, but with the Patreon, I thought I could do concerts. I can release the high quality versions, the high sample rate versions of the, the songs that I've done. For each song that I'm doing, I'm filming like how they're coming together and like behind the scenes footage. So there's a whole idea coming together for like a fan club, for like a, a group of you to support me creating art and music and content for you guys um, in a really intimate way. I've been spending a lot of time on it. So I had nails, like I play guitar, right? But I had nails, I have nails again. 
but I cut them off because I'm like, okay, if I'm going to do this cover thing, I need to come up with my own version. So I started playing guitar. I've got a really cool guitar version of Hello by Evanescence, one of my favorite songs of this. I've come up with something really cool for Hello, but every other song that I was doing, like say Cranberries, I was doing Zombie, everyone does it. They just play it the same. It's a four chord song. There's only so much you can do with it on guitar. So I said to Vaughn, hey, can you bring home the keyboard from one of our schools? And I want to just play around with that too. And it's been a good 20 years since I've like seriously played piano. I think I started when I was 11 or 13. I have re- fallen in love with the instrument it, it's it's there's so much more you can do with it with i find guitar so limiting you know it's um it's so it's dynamic range is is beautiful and when you go down to the low octave oh it's so deep so i can't wait to show you guys what i can actually do on piano and what i've been doing composing these beautiful renditions of some of my favorite songs so basically since the day he bought home the keyboard which is over there that's why i'm pointing to it i haven't gone back to guitar i know <laughs> i was researching what guitar i wanted to buy because i don't really have i've got one guitar but the other 17 one has a bit of a collection now he is and just <laughs> just the day before he bought home the keyboard i'm so glad i didn't buy it i'm so impulsive I need to stop that. So when I said to Fun, oh, I'm really being behind this for a good month now. I want to buy a grand piano. He was like, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> Again, you're fucked. <laughs> but coming from a place with love. He said, wait six months. Anyway, it killed me. I waited two weeks <laughs> and then I bought one. It's not as bad as you think. Um, it's a digital grand piano and I found one for like three and a half thousand dollars. I cannot fucking wait. I'm going to do a video on it coming. It is honestly the piece of furniture that my bedroom needs to complete it and make it the most, my idea of the most epic bedroom ever. Anyway, I haven't put the keyboard down, like as a fucking analogy, because you don't hold the keyboard, since it came. I've been playing my little fingers off. And the beautiful thing about piano versus guitar is you can have nails. Listen to the pitch of my voice. I get excited when it goes higher. So I did a lovely coffer nail, which I'm finding a little more manageable than a claw stiletto. And I can still play, which is terrific. So best of both worlds. I haven't felt this connected to music possibly ever. Like, yeah, I just, I, I kind of feel like I need to warn you. My channel is going to go heavy into music. I'm still going to do these videos. You guys are all into the same music anyway. So it's not going to be like, oh, she's suddenly doing this weird shit. You guys are going to love it. I cannot wait for you to hear what I'm doing. So my piano is supposed to be here next week. I will do a video on that. I had to tell you because I, I didn't want to be like, that is a grand piano. And you guys are like, what the fuck? I didn't even know you played. So I thought I'd talk about it a little bit in this video. So it just doesn't seem so fucking out of nowhere. Join Me in Death is sounding so beautiful. It's such a beautiful song and I'm in love with what I've done with that. I'm working on like 10 songs at once at the moment, so I'll share that with you as well in case I said it in the take where the bloody doorbell rang and I didn't get it or the camera died. So that's Hello by Evanescence. The next one to be recorded is Gone Away, Offspring. I'm doing such a beautiful version of that song. I'm saying that about everyone. I'm so fucking excited. This one's really special. There's Changes in the House of Flies by Deftones. I love that song. We've got Red Water by Typo Negative. That one's really coming together. Lost the other light. Fuck my life. The doorbell just rang again and then I thought I pressed record on the phone and I, I just spoke for like 10 minutes. I don't know what the fuck I said. And now the lights run out. <laughs> Why does life hate me so much right now? <laughs> we'll just have to go with that, okay? We've lost the, the green light. Oh, God damn it. I can't remember what I was saying. I have Nothing Breaks Like a Heart by Miley Cyrus. I'm super excited about that one because it's a pretty poppy song, but I've made it pretty dark and gothic. But I'm still staying true to the, the song. It sounds like the song. It's just the gothic version. Anything that has broken my depression can't be bad. And anything that makes me feel happy will hopefully have the same effect on you guys. So I hope you can feel how genuinely excited I am to really start to get into this and share what I've been working on with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the Halloween decor. There will be more coming because I've just bought some. It's mainly tea towels. So it's, I don't know if it's gonna warrant a video, but <laughs> I'll show you on Instagram what I purchase regardless. Please go over to Instagram and join me if you haven't already. Press that subscribe button and hit the bell so you're notified when my videos are actually released. I don't want you to miss any of my content. I work so hard on it. I hope you guys are wonderful and I will see you in the next video. Bye. If that doorbell rings again, I'm gonna fucking punch the person that is at the door. I'm joking. It was fucking couriers. It's fine. It's just, it's so frustrating. I just put my phone on silent. The doorbell went three times and then I sit down and my green light, my spooky green light just died. The batteries are shit. Sometimes when I'm not myself, 
interruptions really irritate me. Messages on my phone, hence why I turned it fucking silent. Doorbells, just generally being interrupted and not being able to complete my train of thought is super frustrating. Please put a comment down below if you fucking know what I mean.